This is Ken Boyd with St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our site, stltest.net. This is a question where we do a consolidation with eliminating entries and come up with a consolidated set of financials between a parent and a sub. However, I thought this question was hard because the write-up to fair value on assets in the question is not provided. Instead, you have to figure that out, figure out the dollar amount of the write-ups and the dollar amount of goodwill based on figuring out the differential first. I thought this was a tough question that I hadn't seen before. So 1-1-2011, parent purchases 80% of a sub. We're given what the fair value of the entire company would be based on that purchase price. And here's what I do in step one. The first thing in figuring out the differential is what's the fair value of the consideration? What would that be for the whole company? Assuming that a parent paid 185, 196 for 80% of the company. If I take the price paid in blue divided by the percentage in green, I get the 231, 430, 495. Do that again. That was fig that was provided in the question. I wanted to prove that number. Okay. The second thing we need to do is if we know the fair value, the consideration paid in step one, we need to figure out the book value of the sub as of the date that the parent made the purchase. And so going into the sub's balance sheet that was in the question, I took the common stock, I took the common stock and the retained earnings. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. And that total was 189,750. So in step three, I can take the data that I figured out so far and compute the entire differential, which is the fair value of the consideration in step one, the sub's book value, which is the equity section of the balance sheet in step two, and that happens to be 41,745. Now here's the tough part of the question. The building and equipment write-up to fair value the lands right up to fair value and the goodwill were all based on percentages of the differential that are given in the question. An unusual question I hadn't seen before. So the building and equipment write up is 52% in green of the differential in red and same thing all the way down. I added up everything to make sure that I was assigning the entire dollar amount of the differential, 41,745. I also added up the percentages. We find out in the question that the excess building and equipment write-up is amortized over 10 years, so if, and that is, happens over a two-year period. The question asks about 2011 and 2012. So if I take the total amount of the write-up for building in blue divided by useful life in green, I get the annual amortization. We find out that goodwill is impaired by 12% of the original goodwill amount in both 2011 and 2012. So I can take the entire goodwill that I figured out above in step four, the 13,358. I divide it by 12, I multiply it, excuse me, by 12%, and I get the goodwill impairment each year. Then I go into T accounts. The investment in sub, which is going to be on the parent's books, is a T account. It's an asset account. When we make the purchase of 80% of the company, there's the 185, 196. The parent, using the equity method, gets 80%. Their, what they purchased, the percentage they purchased, they get that much income. For 2011, they pay out a dividend. The equity method, that reduces their investment. And they also have the investment in sub lowered by the amortization of 80% of the building and equipment and 80% of the impairment. And those are the numbers that were figured out up here. If I click on this cell, it's 80% of the number in blue, 80% of the goodwill in blue. You'll note that the land write-up was not amortized 
Uh, land doesn't depreciate, but just to be clear for this question, the land write-up does not amortize. So going into income, you have the income equity method. You subtract dividend equity method. And then finally, you have subtractions to income for the amortization and the goodwill. So you've got a total amount for the investment T account right there, 222,657. And we've got an income total. I did the same thing down here for the non-controlling interest that owns the other 20% of the company. Fair value less the 80% purchase means the NCI, the non-controlling interest, starts with 46,299. They get the share of income. They get 20% of the dividends subtracted. They get 20% of the amortization and goodwill impairment subtracted. You get a total beginning balance for the non-controlling interest. Investment and sub. You also get a calculation of 20% of the income, the dividend, the amortization goodwill impairment that goes to income from sub. So I have a formula there. So when I consolidate, I have, scoot over just a bit here, I have the parent and the sub balance sheet. I added those numbers across just so I had a subtotal page. And you're going to notice when I scroll down that there were two entries, and you've seen it on a prior video. The first entry is we want to debit the subs common stock and retained earnings to remove the equity because in consolidation there's no equity. We remove the investment in sub account and the non-controlling interest investment. And the difference between the two to make debits equal credits we post to the differential, which is a debit. And I make a note that it's a temporary account that's going to get removed. How we assign the differential is, we need to credit the differential to get rid of it. It's a temporary account that goes away. These are the amortized, the land didn't change. The land's value was not amortized, so that's the same write-up, the 6679. The building and equipment represents the beginning balance of the write-up, which we saw earlier, less the one year of amortization that we mentioned, because this is as of the end of, of 2011. And finally, to make sure I've got the right differential number, I took the beginning balance, the 41,745 that we saw, I subtracted the amortization and the goodwill for one full year, and I get an ending balance at 1231 of the differential. That is the differential that gets posted here, so we know everything balances out. So again, our two journal entries is eliminate subs equity, eliminate the investment in sub and non-controlling interest, and we get differential. And then we assign the differential between the write-ups to building and equipment and land, the write-up to goodwill, the building and equipment have one year of amortization subtracted, the land has no amortization, and we credit goodwill to remove it. One thing I would suggest when you roll forward this consolidation is, you'll notice how I put some of the entries in brown, the, the elimination entries in brown, debit credit, I put the other elimination entry in blue. I added up the total debits and total credits to make sure that everything balanced. There's total debits and here's total credits. And you'll notice that I didn't carry over these subtotals because I think that causes confusion in my formula. So I didn't carry over the subtotals here. I just carried across balances and you'll see that here at the bottom that assets equals liabilities plus equity, and I know I've got a consolidated balance that works. So that was those were the elimination entries and the consolidated balance for the parent and the sub. That's as far as we'll get today. Remember on the site here, we have the book, All in One Accounting All in One for Dummies, Cost Accounting for Dummies. And 
if you need help with tutoring, we have the tutoring services, and you can email me to find out more about that. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.